Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. Roman Artifact in Serbia On Friday, July 10, 2020, an amazing rare Roman artifact was discovered. It happened during road construction near a landfill in Serbia. One of the road workers uncovered a mysterious stone slab engraved with Latin text. They informed the National Museum in Belgrade, and when a museum archaeologist arrived the next day, the Serbian Roman artifact had disappeared. Within just 24 hours of its discovery, it was stolen. According to the museum archaeologist, the artifact was probably part of a marble monument from the 2nd century AD. One side of the artifact had been engraved with a pair of feet wearing sandals, and on the other side were 15 lines of Latin text. The text, which was preserved thanks to pictures, recounted the life of a Roman military officer. This officer had apparently been behind various military attacks on the local Dacians and had served in no less than three legions throughout his career. What you may not know is that Serbia was part of the Roman Empire for roughly 600 years. It wasn't until the Slavs arrived in the Balkans in the 6th century AD that the Romans lost their power over the region. And because of this, there are plenty of archaeological artifacts hidden throughout the small Eastern European nation. Well, something or someone must have spooked the gang. Amazingly, the rare stone has now been recovered. This was after an appeal across various media platforms by the National Museum of Belgrade, and apparently the object just showed up again. Number 9. Ancient Sword A man with a metal detector discovered a rare sword from around the year 1700 BC. What makes this story so interesting is that he wasn't using his metal detector in some rural field or looking through the remains of some ancient battleground. He was in his parents' backyard. The discovery was made in the small village of Panela, which is in Finland. The artifact is a bronze sword at least 4,000 years old, but smashed to pieces. It was hiding just beneath the top layer of soil in the garden and was his first big find using a metal detector. His name is Mati Rintama, and he purchased the tool just two weeks before finding the sword. According to the local Satakunta Museum, these kinds of discoveries are quite rare. Less than 200 objects from the Bronze Age have ever been found in Finland, and out of those 200 artifacts, only 25 were swords or daggers, and out of those 25, only two were found near Panela. The archaeologists with the museum say the sword was probably deposited in shallow water, then, over many centuries, the water receded, the area turned into a marshland, then became a field, and then a residential neighborhood. The reason this sword was put in the water in the first place was likely an attempt to please the solar divinities of a sun cult. The sword is now in Helsinki, and officials have cataloged it in the archaeological collections of the Finnish National Museum. Fundraising efforts have been proposed to cover conservation costs, hoping to exhibit the sword in a regional museum. Number 8. The Face of Christ A surprising discovery was just made at St. Owen's Church of Ireland in the small Irish community of Ballymore. The church isn't that old, built as recently as 1827, but it's been decaying quite a bit, and so the locals pooled their resources and refurbished it. And that was when local historian CMS McDermott was brought in to help. As he was wandering around the site, he stumbled upon a rather strange building block, a piece of stone from the 13th century. CMS was shocked to see that the piece of stone had a carving on it that appeared to him to be the face of Christ. The thing about this church is that it was built over the site of an even older church, dating back roughly 800 years. But that much older church had collapsed, and so pieces of it were used to build the new one. That's why this 13th century stone had been used as a brick to help build the structure. But here's where things get strange. The stone, which is only about 12 inches by 8 inches, about the size of a sheet of paper, was seen by multiple other people at the site. But Siamis was the first one who actually saw the face, which almost seems to have appeared overnight. Nobody knows how that could be possible, and so we have to assume that everyone else just missed it. The mystery now is that nobody knows who carved the face into the stone or what its purpose was. We also don't know why such an obviously important carving of Jesus Christ would be jammed into an upper church window where nobody would see it for almost 1,000 years. St. Owen's Church received a grant of about $100,000 from the Heritage Council to refurbish the tower of the church and keep it unspoiled for as long as possible. 
Researchers believe now that more surprises are hidden around the site. Number 7. Native American Artifacts A team of archaeologists working along the Great P.D. River near Johnsonville just discovered a small collection of artifacts that once belonged to the Native Americans who had originally lived in this part of South Carolina. According to Chris Judge, the secretary of the Archaeological Society of the P.D., this river was one of the interstates of the pre-colonial era. The Native Americans who lived here used the rivers and other waterways as their highways, going by boat from one settlement to another. It was how people got around quickly, and it's why there were so many settlements built beside rivers. The river system helped them operate an efficient trading network. It was Chris's team who discovered evidence of groups living beside the river over a long span of about 1,000 years. The oldest artifact dates back 2,500 years to the Mississippian era. This was when native communities blanketed much of the United States. This particular area was the very last stage of development that the Native Americans ever reached before the Europeans arrived. Chris says the people who lived here were at the edge of their society's frontier. And sadly for them, they were some of the first to be contacted by foreigners, who would massacre nearly all their people and steal their land. As for artifacts, the team found nothing too exceptional like statues or weapons, but instead they found the remains of houses and the everyday objects that would have been used by the natives. The project was funded by the Florence County Council on property belonging to Santee Cooper. The team is hopeful to one day soon exhibit the artifacts at the Florence County Museum. Number 6. The Stolen Nostradamus Manuscript A manuscript written by Nostradamus went missing 15 years ago. This text was written by the most famous French astrologer that ever lived, Michel de Nostradamus. It was being kept safe in a library in Rome when somebody managed to steal the book. This manuscript is over 500 years old and contains what some believe to be prophecies about the future. It was only rediscovered when the ancient work was put up for sale at an auction house in Germany. This is one of the greatest and most mysterious books ever written. And yet listen to what happened after the artifact was pillaged from Rome in 2007. Investigators traced the book to flea markets in Paris, then the German city of Karlsruhe. That was where an art dealer somehow got a hold of it, then tried to sell the book off for a measly $12,000. What nobody seemed to realize as this manuscript was bouncing around flea markets was its authenticity. The book was written by Nostradamus himself containing within its 500 pages prophecies about plagues, killer robots, and a world war erupting in 2023. Thankfully, this one-of-a-kind piece of history is now back in Rome and safely stored in the library where it belongs. Number 5. Ceremonial Golden Gloves The ceremonial golden gloves of Peru were discovered around the 1980s. Archaeologists aren't entirely sure what these strange golden hands were used for, but believe it had something to do with ceremonial activity. The artifacts almost look like infinity gauntlets, solid gold hands wrought by the Chimu culture on the northern coast of Peru. The Chimu culture prospered in Peru from between 900 to the year 1470. Their capital city was Chan Chan, a place filled with beautiful artwork, captivating architecture, and a people with a rich history. Sadly, the Chimu went to war with the Inca and were utterly decimated. Fifty years after the Inca obliterated the only other culture that may have been able to help them, the Spanish conquistadors arrived and wiped them out. These fantastic golden gloves were probably used in one of the mysterious religious ceremonies practiced by the Chimu. But unfortunately, it's difficult for researchers to determine exactly what kind of ceremony. Number 4. Artifacts from Philip II of Macedon Archaeologists in Bulgaria recently came across some extraordinarily rare artifacts. These items were uncovered during the excavation of a Thracian tomb in the country's north. They appear to have something to do with Philip II of Macedon, who was the father of Alexander the Great. The discovery was made near the small village of Zeshatari, which was once ruled by Thracian tribes. Archaeologists found animal motifs, an exquisite tiara, 100 golden buttons, and much more. But it's not so much about what they found as who the stuff had belonged to. History experts say these artifacts came from the tomb of Gath, ruler of Cotella, and father-in-law of Philip II of Macedon. 
Diana Gergova, head of the archaeological team, says these artifacts are extraordinarily rare and nothing similar has ever been found in Bulgaria. The Thracians were a powerful culture of warriors who were insanely rich in gold. They lived across Romania, Bulgaria, Turkey, and some of northern Greece starting about 6,000 years ago. While Greece and Rome were busy advancing themselves as civilizations, so too were the Thracians. The only difference was that the Thracians lived on the borders of these other places, so nobody really bothered them. It wasn't until the year 45 when the Roman Empire showed up and absorbed them, just swallowed them whole and nearly erased their culture. But before the Romans came along, the Thracians were insanely powerful. It looks like this tomb and all the artifacts in it belong to Alexander the Great's grandfather-in-law. Just two generations later, Alexander would go on to conquer the world, or at least an enormous chunk of it. Number 3. The First Metal Artifact Tel Tasaf is a small village in the central Jordan Valley of Israel, with human habitation there dating back to about 5200 BC. The city was first discovered in the 1950s, but just recently, a metal artifact was discovered here that dates back to the village's origins, 7,000 years ago. That makes the artifact the oldest piece of man-made metal ever found in the Middle East. What this suggests is that metal technology appeared first in Israel, centuries earlier than anywhere else in the world. The metal object wasn't the only thing archaeologists found. They identified architectural complexes, silos once used to hold about 30 tons of grain each, and cooking facilities. This was a major settlement in Israel and shows just how advanced these people truly were. Archaeologists even found painted pottery, thousands of beads made from ostrich eggshells, items from volcanic glass all the way from Armenia, and pottery imported from Mesopotamia. But it's really the metal all which has everybody's attention. According to Professor Josef Garfinkel, the object is an elongated pin that was made from cast copper. It's pretty small and we don't know what it was used for, yet it shows actual evidence of metallurgy practices over 3,000 years before the first known bronze items were made. Number 2. The Mississippian Stone Statue Tennessee has its very own official state artifact. It's one of the rarest Native American artifacts still intact after centuries. Artists made this stone statue sometime around the year 1250 during the Mississippian period. Only this was made by a group of people living in what is today Tennessee. The enormous statue, nearly two feet tall and depicting what appears to be an older man down on one knee, was discovered in 1939. A farmer was working in Wilson County when he came upon the statue completely by accident. What began as a farm actually ended up becoming the Sellers Farm archaeological site, one of the richest places in America for native artifacts. We now know that this site was a major town for Mississippian culture. Archaeologists have identified a large platform and plaza surrounded by embankments, then small dwellings on the outskirts of that. This statue was probably a way for whoever crafted it to venerate someone's ancestors. Just like how we might have photographs of our grandparents hung up on the walls, the ancient people who lived along the Mississippi had stone statues of their loved ones erected around town or situated in their own homes. Number 1. Bronze Age Spear A spear from the Bronze Age was discovered in a pretty strange place. The spear, which has been dated to about 3,500 years ago, was found inside the sewage works in the English region of Cirencester. It was found during construction work for new wetland habitat. The spear predates the invasion of the Romans by quite some time. The British Bronze Age lasted from about 2500 BC until 700 BC. Britain wasn't under Roman occupation until the year 43 AD. But let's look at the actual discovery. According to the project manager, Alex Thompson, when the digger pushed its scoop into the Bronze Age pit, the very first thing revealed was this beautiful spear. Nobody had expected that the work would reveal such great artifacts so quickly. As for how it got there, archaeologists believe this spear was a family heirloom placed inside the pit, which had likely been used for ritual burials. This whole area, about 10 acres of floodplain, had once been a vast settlement of prehistoric humans. The archaeologists took as much as they could, dug as much as they were able, and then had to give up. All 10 acres are being converted into a natural site, 
which will house amphibians, birds, and increase biodiversity by roughly 5%. Thanks for watching! Which artifact was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon! Bye!